current airborne energy systems as the ones that you can see here don't have an active control system. They use a pilot kite for passive control and lift. This has however limitations for real in real out systems and for launching and landing and if you try to build a larger system. A cyclic pitch system in the rotor could remove the need for a pilot kite by using the lift generated by the rotor itself and by making the rotor steerable. Combined with collective pitch it would also allow for real in real out airborne systems. A control system could be implemented using ailerons with servo motors. However, the servos doing cyclic movements for each turn might have a negative impact on their durability. As an alternative, we have chosen a design derived from swash plates used in helicopters. Since we only need the cyclic pitch, a simpler design known as the Scotch yoke has been chosen as a starting point for design. A Scotch yoke converts a rotary motion, like the one of our rotor, into a harmonic sine waved linear motion, like the one that we need for our pitch movement. Since we have four blades, we doubled the yoke and then replaced both the yokes with tethers. Let's have a look at the control pod that you've seen in the video. Um, here in the cut system it's easier to see the inside, so let's do it here first. So we run from the four blades of the rotor one tether to each of these four rods. They take up the lift and drag forces from the blades. And then we run another tether from the nose of the blade through this little hole to this disc. Now if the rotor spins and we maintain the position of that plate stable, each rotor blade will get closer and then further away from that disc. For each turn and thereby cyclically changing the pitch of all four rotor blades. How much depends on how far we push the disc out of the center so we can go from zero cyclic pitch to a maximum thereby controlling the amplitude and if we allow the controller to slew the disc to the left and the right we can control the face and thereby controlling the direction of the resulting uh, forces and thereby completely control the rotor in direction and force. All we have to do is maintain the position of this plate stable while the rotor spins. And the way we do that is by building in a little gimbal motor, a speed controller, a battery, and an IMU that uh, measures the acceleration for the rotor and an ESP that runs some magic sauce code um, and tells the motor here how fast it has to spin so that it actually keeps the plate stable in space. Now if you if you look carefully in the video, you might have seen a second cross behind the first one that is actually used for collective pitch and for as a torque limiter so that uh, overspeed in the rotor will not destroy our helix that actually transmits the power to the ground, to the floor. Um, ground? I think it's ground. Anyways, um, so if this cross spins relative to this one, 
it will change the pitch of all four blades in the same point in time, either because the torque has exceeded a maximum that has been pre-configured between these two pins here, or because we have preset a collective pitch um, and thereby adjusting for different wind speeds. But that is a topic for another day for another video. Why do we need that rotation compensation? I'm glad you asked. A swash plate should actually be called swash plates, where the plate that is controlled by the pilot needs to be connected to a rotary stable part. In helicopters, this is achieved using an airframe with a tail rotor. Our rotary airborne energy system only consists of a rotor with no airframe. Our active rotation compensation in the plate removes the need for that airframe and for the tail rotor. So where are we with our development? In the video, you can see a test run in the hangar last week. The rotor on the wall is a mock-up with built-in with a built-in motor to drive the whole system. It had built-in load cells in all forearms, allowing us to take all the aerodynamic forces. We use the test to see if the mechanics actually work. They do. Uh, to fine-tune the control algorithm and to collect data lots of data. The test was very successful, so the next test will be done actually airborne in the field. For that we'll have to bring together uh, Team Total Power in one place, which due to COVID restrictions might take a couple of weeks. So please be patient, but I promise I'll publish the most beautiful crashes instantaneously. The details about the control system and the data itself will be published as part of Daniel's master thesis this year. And as usual, all the designs are open source and can be found in my own shape and on Keith's GitHub. Thanks to Team Turtle Power, to our incredibly talented master student Daniel, and to Moritz Diel for coming up with the idea of a rotation compensator. Thanks for watching. And bye.